Hi, I'm Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, and this is episode 123, which I find is fun. Like, one, two, three. Pleasely amused, obviously. <laughs> so, a big hello and welcome to any new viewers, and a big hello and thank you to all returning viewers. I am recording a day early, and hopefully, last week we had horrible thunderstorms, so even though I recorded a day early, it actually didn't go up until Wednesday. But today, it has to go up today, because tomorrow I hop on a plane. I'm so excited to be going to Minnesota, and to meet so many wonderful people, and see so many other wonderful people again. So, real quick, knit along. Knit along. I'm so excited about this knit along. I hope you are too. So, um, starting June 23rd, there will be a knit along for my, what is now currently being called the Mystery Shawl. So you will have from June 23rd all the way through July 31st. So you will have plenty, plenty, plenty of time, like over five weeks, like five and a half weeks or something like that, to get it done. You can do it. I know you can. I'm excited. I can't wait to finally show it off to people. So speaking of knit-alongs, I've said before, I have the best viewers ever, and I truly, truly believe that with, like, all my heart. So... What makes my viewers so wonderful is they are so generous, and not just to me, because, you know, I've had people send me so many wonderful things, which are so grateful, greatly appreciated, <laughs> but I had a viewer, I need to double check that I can say who she is, um, I mean, I guess I posted <laughs> I posted it on Instagram before, um, I, I, I asked, so I guess it's already out there who it is, so, um, Sarah, forensics girl, she sent not one, but two skeins of Volmiza as a prize for the knit along. Like, OMG! So there is, this one is the twin, so it's 80% superwash merino, 40% um, nylon, I assume. It's in German. It just says 20% PA, and I cannot pronounce this next word. Anyways. You get 150 grams because Volmiza skeins are, like, so generous with the yardage. Um, it says it is 100 grams, 510 yards, um, and the color is called Moses, which is a beautiful blue. It kind of matches my nails. And then this one is gorgeous, too. It's this beautiful deep red. This is 100% merino. Okay, wait, it says 100... Down here, 100. Oh, it might be. It's not around, but this is okay. So it's 150 grams. I'm pretty sure because you get 510 yards. But it says 100 grams down here. I don't know. Labels have me confused. <laughs> Anyways, this one is 100% superwash merino. 150 grams, 574 yards, and I might not be pronouncing this right, but I would pronounce it bussy. B u s s i. B u c. I don't know. Could be wrong. But anyways, these lovely beauties could be yours if you knit the mystery shawl, enter the photo in the photo only thread, and the random number generator picture number. So, um, you can make as many shawls as you like. You can only earn win one prize. And I always give away prizes in the order they came out the door. So when I opened the box, the blue one was on top, the red one was underneath. So, winner number one will get the blue, winner number two will get the red. And then, because, like I said, I have the most awesome viewers ever, she sent me a birthday present. Get ready to totally be jealous. You ready? It's all ready. It's a Starbucks mug, like my Ohio one I showed, I think, a couple weeks ago. Um, that I got for Mother's Day. There's a little tea sip stain there. Anyways, it's from Lake Tahoe. I love this mug. I am so obsessed with these mugs. Like, in a big way. I want one, I want one of each one. And my husband's like, holy crap, Jenna, where are we going to put them all? <laughs> so we'll make room. So I have my tea in there. Because even though it's like almost 90 degrees out, I'm still drinking hot tea. That's how I roll. I love my tea. So, 
I have two finished objects this week. You only get to see one. I did finish the Breakaway Cal out of the um, Barocco Boboli for the LYS sample. Um, I do not have... I didn't take a picture of it yet. <laughs> it's at the knit shop. I guess I finished it like that night before and had it blocked and ready to go. So, but there will be one on my project page. It came out lovely. I don't know, the Barocco Boboli was a single ply, and I, I am not a fan of the single ply. Unless if it's Madeline Tosh, Tosh Marina Light. It's the only single ply I've ever used that I like. Not that I've used that many, in all honesty. But yeah, I, it just reminded me I'm not a lover of the single ply. And then the other thing I finished, it's not knitting, but it is yarn related, is the woven scarf that I've been working on on my loom. So it is out of Lorna's Laces in the Tom Foolery colorway as my warp. So the strings that go up and down on the loom. And then for my weft, which is on the little shuttle and it goes back and forth. Because I know not everybody's a weaver. I'm sorry if you're a weaver and you're like, I know that. Um, so for my weft, I use Knit Picks Gloss, which is a silk merino blend. And um, in the Rouge colorway. So, okay. So I did it where when I warped it, I was very conscientious about where my um, warping peg was when I was stringing it up. So that way the colors would line up and kind of do a semi-stripe. So hopefully the camera will pick it up. So see, it should get, so it starts at like this gold color, and see it gets darker there, and then it goes back to the gold, and it's orange in between the in between the magenta and the gold, it's like orange. And then it gets dark again. Doo, doo, doo. And then it gets light again. And then it has magenta fringe on one end and kind of the gold fringe on the other. And I just went until I ran out of rouge yarn. So it's about 8 feet long. It's long. Actually, it's a little less than 8 feet because actually I went and I soaked it in some soak. And then I just laid it out on my blocking boards in the sun so it got to dry in the wonderful Ohio sunshine. Because I'm a bit partial to it. You should love the sunshine wherever you are. And uh, it did shrink up a bit. And um, oh, it just came out so nice. I did put some blocking pins just every foot or two, foot and a half, because it was windy out. So, but oh, it dried so nice. Like, I'm so happy with it. Hopefully the recipient, because it is a gift, will like it. It's very light and airy. Let's see. I would wear it just like this, because then it's not too long. Yeah, it, the fringe would hit about your waist waistband how I would wear it but that's just me but it's so light and thin because it is a silk merino lace weight yarn and then a merino nylon fingering weight yarn and it's just a very light summery bright scarf more more of a fashion piece than a functional piece which is what I was going for personally. And it's not perfect because it's only my second loomed piece ever, but it was it was woven with much love. So I will have to make sure I get pictures of the person with it on and hopefully hopefully she loves it. Because it is for a girl because it's pink. Not that dudes don't wear pink. But it's a very girly scarf for somebody who I think could totally rock it because I can't wear pinks like that at all. Mm. So besides those two finished objects, I have works in progress. So I started last week, I'm trying to think what night I cast it on. It might have been like Wednesday, like 11 o'clock at night I cast it on. So I worked on it Thursday through today. 
It is the Zoe Cardigan by Sherry Christensen, also known as C2 Knits. It's going to be kind of hard because it is on the needle. I am mid-row. <laughs> but this has been a really, really easy knit. So I started it, and I'm reading the pattern. And I thought when you got to the sleeves, because it's just little cap sleeves, that you bound off for the sleeves and then kept going. But then I'm reading it and you go back and you actually knit a few rows around each sleeve cuff and the neckline. So what I did is I'm alternating skeins because it is Madeline Tosh Vintage. It's their worsted weight in the turn colorway. This was the yarn my husband got me for my birthday. And I thought, well, if I hurry up and knit it, he'll be like, oh, see, she knits with the stuff I buy her and it's not going to just sit in the yarn cubbies and he'll be more willing to buy more like the psychology of it I'm thinking right so um at one point I'm working from the outside of the skeins so I started pulling from the inside and went and did the cuffs and the neckline that way they're the same balls that I used at the top in case if one of the skeins looks significantly darker than the rest and it, that's the one I'm planning to end with because I'm almost hoping I'm not going to have to use it, but I think I'm kidding myself. So, my thought process is, well, if I wait and I use that darker skein for the cuffs and the neck, it'll be really noticeable. It's a different skein. So, um, and that worked. And that way, if I need to make it longer, I have that option and not have to worry about, am I going to have enough? Um, so, that's worked out for me. So, it's a... It's supposed to be a summer cardigan knit out of like a cotton or a cotton blend yarn and I had no interest in doing that. I wanted a wool sweater because I'm a wool girl. I love wool. Not big on blends, not big on cottons. Um, so there is a cable and a lace, lace panel that goes down. See the cable and then there's a little bit of lace on each side of the cable. And it goes down on both sides of the front. The sweater is worked top down. So like I said, there's two panels here. So it'll go all the way down to the bottom. But on the sleeves, like I said, they're just little cap sleeves. has the same detail on down both sleeves. And I was like, oh yeah, I can crank this out. And I can have it done by the time I leave for my trip. Ha, no. <laughs> Absolutely fooling myself. Sorry if the lighting isn't the best. I didn't feel like putting contacts in and my hair is in a ponytail because it is hot. Hot and humid. It's like you can handle the heat if it's not muggy and sticky, but it is... Ugh. So like I said, Zoe Cardigan by um, Sherry Christensen, also known as C. The letter C, the number two, knits. Um, really easy. I mean, so ridiculously easy of a pattern. I'm almost tempted to take this with me on the retreat because it's so easy. And I know sometimes her patterns tend to run a little big, but I got gauge, like just on gauge. Hopefully, hopefully it won't be too big. I, I've kind of tried to try it on, although it's not quite long enough because I'm not using a long enough cable on the needle. I think it's going to be fine. So works in progress number one. Works in progress number two. Um, I just started these um, specifically to take on the trip. I wound up and split my oh hey there's a needle in there my um, Vesper um, Land and Sea yarn. So pretty. Ah, I dropped the bag. I love the colors like from the bottom when it's all wound up. I always love to look at that. I don't know what it is. Sorry, I dropped my bag, y'all. And then I started the cuff of each sock, made sure I'd knit a little extra on this one. I was like watching TV and I'm like, I'm knitting it, I'll go a few more rows. So I started the cuffs on both because I will knit the cuff on each one and then the leg on one, leg on the other. Just like I always say, but I figure if you're new, you haven't heard me explain that before. That way I never get stuck in sock syndrome. And also it helps make sure that I keep things even. 
because then I know exactly like okay after this stripe stop and it's not I'm not going wait did I knit two or three rows of that stripe before I stopped or it just works for me I like doing that I always knit my socks top down knit toe up ones before and I just don't like them and my girl cave bags with my lemons figured I'm going on the retreat and I gotta take a lemon bag that way people know it's me <laughs> and then the last thing um, I started which I think is going to be my plain knitting like my plain P-L-A-N-E <laughs> um, I started my brickless by Martina Bem. I feel like I am the last person on in the knitting community to knit one. I mean, I know I'm not. It just feels that way. Um, we took, my husband is a great cook and every Mother's Day I get a big breakfast at home. He makes pancakes and bacon and eggs and everything. Like, it's this huge spread. I am not so much the cook. <laughs> I don't even want to try to make pancakes, to be honest. Like, I will probably burn them, or they'll be, like, overdone on the outside and raw on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure someone out there, you know, everyone's had a pancake like that a time or two in their lives. That would be me, and I'm like, you know, it's his day, and I don't want to make horrible pancakes or whatever. So we take him out for breakfast, usually. So that's what we did this year, and while we were waiting for our table, I got it started and the first repeat of the three sections done. Could have gotten more done, but I was trying to like take it slow because it was a long wait. We don't usually have to wait that long. I think we got up late or something. But I'm knitting it out of Miss Babs Wowza What a Skein or Yowza. Yeah, Yowza What a Skein. Let's see. Oh, there's picking up some of the color. Um, it is Zombie Games. I thought it's a beautiful color, right? It's all shades of a bright blue and navy blue, um, kind of like a zombie putrid green, um, a lime green, and plum and gray. And it's just beautiful. I, I, <laughs> I love the colors and that's why I bought it, but the name kind of was like the clincher. And then I'm like, I'm going to a zombie knitpocalypse retreat. You gotta take some zombie games, like, right? So, let's see, show the bottom. Oh, I wish it would pick up the colors better because the colors aren't just like kapow and you're just, they're so vibrant and yet jewel toned and beautiful. And I mean, Miss Babs. Oh, this is a phenomenal job, right? Can't go wrong with Miss Babs. So, those are my three projects on the needles that I am currently working on. Like I said, I'm taking the socks. This will be my airplane knitting. And I want to take the sweater, but I keep telling myself, Jenna, really? You're going to really knit that much? It's five days. Okay. You're not going to finish a brickless and a pair of socks in five days. So the sweater will probably be left home, even though I don't want to leave it home because I'm really enjoying, it's so easy. If you really want an easy cardigan pattern, that's really the one. So far. I'm not finished with it yet. When I'm done, I might feel different. But so far, it's a great, great pattern. So I have no, no yarny goodness. Um... No book reviews and magazine reviews this week because I've been insanely busy packing. So if you stick if you stick around just for the knitting, I will see you next week because we're gonna move into a slice of life. So um, my goal this week was to have a short show. I know lots of other people are getting ready to leave, and I know it's summer, so there's not always as much time to watch podcasts. So, um, yeah, packing. So it's kind of a, I think it's kind of a funny story. So when I was coming um, to the retreat or going to the retreat last year, the only carry-on size suitcase we had was my daughter's. So it was kind of like a kid's suitcase, but it's super cute. It's like lime green with apples on it, like hot pink apples. I think it's adorable. Well, I measured it, and it was the size of a carry-on, right? It didn't hold much, and I kind of caught crap for bringing such a little suitcase. 
especially by my friend Susan. Yeah, called you out, Susan. <laughs> um, so this year I I bought I bought myself a grown up suitcase, and it holds so much more. Holy crap! Like I'm still amazed, like how much I'm fitting into this suitcase. It weighs a ton. I'm like they might not let it on the plane because it weighs a ton, but um, it definitely. Uh, has has been a better packing experience this year. So I'm almost done. Today has been laundry day. I ran all my errands yesterday. I ran around, made sure the fridge is stocked and the cupboards are stocked. Nobody should need for food while I'm gone. Um, did all those little last minute things that I had to do going everywhere. And then, um, it's so funny because my friend Susan, once again mentioning her, uh, always goes and gets a mani pedi before she leaves for the trip. And she's like, "Oh yeah, you go and relax and get your nails done." And I'm like, "That's really brilliant." So she posted over a pic over the weekend a picture of her with her feet um, in the little pedicure tub, and I'm like, "Oh!" So I did. I went and I got a mani pedi, and I'm so doing this every year from now on. I've gotten manicures several times before. Because I used to go get my nails done all the time when I worked in retail. Because we had to have well cut nails. Like you didn't have to have them painted or anything. But it, you had to, they couldn't be all chipped and ragged and dirty looking. And I just found keeping them painted um, worked best for me. So I used to go get manicures all the time. So it was my first pedicure. Oh my god. It was so awesome. Like if I could pay to have that done like every day I would. <laughs> it was great. So the girl was able, there was a cancellation, and she was able to get me in last night. I was like the last evening appointment. And um, so I was leaving, and I was like, oh, well, next time I do this, you know, do I need to give you like a week's notice or so? And she's like, I prefer three, because I'm usually booked three weeks up. It just happened to work out. I had a cancellation. I was like, jackpot. So I do. It was so relaxing, and it put me in a better mindset today, because all I have to do today is laundry. So that way when I leave, everybody has clean clothes, and by the time I come back, everyone's laundry baskets will be filled again, but everybody should be taken care of for the next few days. So, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see everybody, I cannot wait to have fun, and I can't wait to tell all of you all about it, and I should definitely have some yarny goodness to show next week, because I've been trying to be a good girl, and and not buy. It's so hard. Oh. Oh. And hopefully I'll get a good night's sleep. I didn't sleep real great last night only because I'm so excited. And I know tonight I'm going to just be so excited. So, um, like I said, I will be on Instagram. If you, friend, if you, because my thing said is private because I was getting all these weird people following me and it just, it creeps me out. So if you, um, you know, request to follow me on Instagram, have it on there that you're on Ravelry or Knitter. You know, if your thing's not private, I can see that you knit in your pictures. Because like I said, I got some like real weirdo type people kind of follow me. So I had to go through and block them and then turn my thing to private. So, um, so yeah, so if I deny your request, I feel like a jerk. But I didn't know that you were in the, the Yarny community to accept your request um, or approve it or whatever it is on Instagram. But I will be Instagramming a crap ton of pictures. I apologize now if it's going to end up annoying you because it will be lots of food and knitting and people and the obligatory um, airplane shot because my daughter's like, now mom. Don't forget to post on Instagram your the shot from the airplane. She's like, I love seeing that it really looks like a patchwork quilt. <laughs> so, um, so yes, I will be doing that because it is fun and I like having those memories for myself. And if you are going, I look forward to seeing you. And um, like I said, all next week will be all about the retreat. So if you really don't want to hear about the retreat and see pictures and, and all that, then skip the retreat. I mean, it'll have that it's the retreat episode in the title. Um, but I hope you're interested in hearing about the experience because if you've never gone to a knitting retreat, it's so much fun. And, and you should try to go one, if not locally, 
you, or if not, you know, you can't travel, try to find one locally, because it's just, it's so much fun. So, um, like I said, try to keep it short this week, because I still have a lot of laundry to do, and some packing, even though the packing's almost done. And, um, I guess if you're going to the retreat, and you get to watch this before you leave, I will see you in a day or two, and, um, for all the viewers out there who watch on their computers, I will see you next week with Tales to Tell. So, I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon. I am Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Clark, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Fitbit, and Weight Watchers. So, until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.